and then that should be it. These towers are not as complex as I thought they would be. See the hole? I can reach the hole. Hey, I think I touched uh, some power lines. Huzzah! I just peed a little. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we're ready to start it. This is, this is the line. Huh? Hey, everybody. We are Kate and Misha, and this is For Love of Wind. Uh, welcome back. We're really excited about this video. Finally, we're, we're through with scrambling for major repair and... Finally getting into some of the things that we had planned on doing that we wanted to do, some of the improvements that we wanted to make, and we've been sidetracked so many times by repairs or hurricanes hurricanes and lack of knowledge <laughs> we now finally are able to start getting to some of these projects that we are are going to enjoy we're going to be excited about this week we are going to be putting up our tower on the back of the boat this boat did not have a, a dinghy davits of any kind and and really there's no place for solar to hoist a dinghy the works we get a guy out to give us a quote and i said what i want is davits and that was obscenely expensive. I think that was uh, over seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Really? Really? That's 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 ridiculous. It so, was a little bit out of our budget. We were not expecting it to be that expensive. So we started looking at what it would take to maybe build our own. Build our own. So if you're gonna build your own, everybody's first stop is tower in a box tower in a box we order the tower from tower in a box and uh it got delivered late at night i guess it wasn't late late at night but it was, it was dark dinner time it yeah, was, and yeah it was like, like eight winter, o'clock so, nine o'clock. yeah mm -hmm. so it, it shows up in a big morning. truck the boat was on the hard at the time we were hoping to get the tower up splash the boat and move aboard we had the drone up to film it as you can see and Misha's uh, shooting footage, and the guy gets out to deliver the tower, and he's like, oh, what is all this? A uh, super awesome driver. Liked us and followed us on Facebook right there. So he's like, oh, I'm following this. He couldn't believe that people who complete amateurs were willing to, like, sail around the world. Perfect, right here. And I'm going to take it apart. The boat's over there. We'll put it on there tomorrow. All right, let me sign this. Is it? Yeah. It's, uh... End of this building, the building, the mask right behind it. Oh, the one from the wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna try and. Uh, How long are you going inside the water? We're gonna uh, for we're gonna leave uh, in this for five years, sail around the world. Seriously. <laughs> All right. Where, where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Crazy, man. Right? selling this. God bless you, man. <laughs> you doing what you? What, like, this how a light is. You only got one. You yeah. leave a one. Amen. And you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? Amen. I work, yeah, that's man. Right. We're trying to make we're it. We're going to be broke, but it'll be fun. Amen. <laughs> right. All right, so we're going to mount our tower here. Uh, we're going to set it a little far back, a little farther back than uh, maybe it needs to be. We're doing that on purpose for two reasons. We, we want the dinghy to be able to lower straight down into the water and not have to swing out. And we got some big solar panels. How did we actually make this happen? Well, we unpack it and we put it together. And this was my my premise for it, right? I was not going to try and like super detailed measure the distance where I was going to put the feet, try and figure out the center of the feet and, and, and shove things around. We put it together and we hoisted it up. We're going to put the feet in the tower and tape them in place. We are then going to crank the tower up and fit check it.
So when you do this, if you're watching this for, for instructional, hoist it up, adjust it in so we could find out exactly where the front feet are going to go. And once we had where the front feet are going to go, and you measure down the length of the pole, you know, you, you go straight. Like, so if the pole's curved, you want to measure like this to your boat. And that's where you, that, that, that distance is how much you need to cut off. Off the front, not the back, right? So it's, it's sitting here on like this, you put it down, you need to cut off the front so that it goes down like that. We know how much to cut now. What we need to do is shorten this leg from here 11 inches. Well, this we can't shorten, so we'll shorten this 11 inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure up 11 inches. So we hoisted it up a second time after we had cut the back off of it, the back, the front legs off so that it would fit. Now we have all four feet. We put the, the we, we hoisted the tower up one more time. We found out exactly where all four feet will go specifically. And I marked not only the circle around, not only the circle around the feet, but I marked the, the bolt holes. And you want to make sure that it's curved properly. You're going to have to tension this thing up. So, so the feet have a, a, a post that hinges like this. It doesn't hinge in any direction. It only hinges one way. So that has to be spun properly so that it hinges towards your tower so that your foot can sit flat. The foot has to sit flat on the fiberglass. Can't stress that enough. So now I need to make some starboard plates that have a, you know, the hull is not completely flat. It's got a curve to it. So I'm going to grind out some starboard plates so that the feet sit perfectly flat and we will bolt the front feet and then that will give us a spot to cut and bolt the back feet and then that should be it these towers are not as complex as i thought they would be so uh, next step is to grind out the starboard outward in a bowl from that. So, <clears throat> let me sit down and, and I'm literally just using a 50 grit sanding wheel on the Dremel.
Okay. Uh. Ah, I can see the hole. I can reach the hole. Hey, I think I touched uh, some power lines. I did. <laughs> okay, so there's power cords right here. That was exciting. We will probably want to not be plugged into shore power <laughs> when I tighten that up. Okay. <laughs> that was energetic. Let's see. And right there, you can see that was our little mark. Look how stable that is. No rolly rolly. Got to unscrew it. There we go. I don't think so, but I touched some metal brackets and it was not like a, I put a fork in a socket. It was like a battery tingle, but you know, when like you get any tingle, you're like, that's not right. <laughs> we actually smoked that Dremel tool. I think we burnt it up. We did. Yeah. 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 We killed the Dremel on that project, <laughs> but worth it. Worth it. <laughs> uh, now, now it, it, in Dremel's defense, this was a Dremel tool that we had purchased in the mid nineties. Yes. This is not to say anything against Dremel. No, we, we, had Dremel had, we had had this Dremel tool for so stinking long. And I, because you're sitting there, you sand, you sit it. Is it wobbly? No, you sand, you sit it. It was, was it wobbly. It does not need to be perfect because you're going to put a thin, not a thin, you're going to put a medium sized layer of 5200. You can glob it on. <laughs> I said medium yeah. size. You're going to fill in all the gaps with 5200. It's on. Now all we need to do is mark where the feet go, take it off, drill, you know, through the feet, put the bolts in. We need to fit these bolts on. So we have to drill those. Uh, and then we have to mount our dinghy mounts. These feet just slide into here. So we need to put a bolt all the way through. And we're gonna do that on the ground. I'm just gonna mark where they go. And then these are rotated where they need to be now. So I can take a mark and mark here like that. So we know exactly where they're rotated and where they need to be. We have marked exactly where the rotation of this thing. There's already a screw in the middle for the base plate. So I got the rotation. And I'm going to go right through this hole here. It does not come with bolts to mount the feet to your boat. Want to get bolts at West Marine? Let's do it. Because you want to bolt the tower's feet up without the tower on it. That's way easier. There's a center hole you have to drill, you have to put a bolt through and all that kind of stuff. Plus, we did a lot of 5200. Uh, there's a steel plate that goes on the inside. Make sure you use that. We did a 5200 on the inside, 5200 on the outside. Uh, it's now part That's of the not boat. not moving, yeah. No, it, those feet will never come off. All right, so we've already done all the others. So this is the last one. We thought we should record at least one of them. Now, the first one was horribly frustrating. We've got our groove down, so I won't look like a complete idiot this time. Uh, 5200 goop all the way around the bottom of the starboard that we've ground out to fit. So we take that and it's angled and marked to fit here. So we just put it in place and hold it still. Then we have our foot. It's angled and marked separately. Probably would have been smart to mark them in the same spot. But it needs to go right there with that angle mark. Now, to keep them lined up, I put a second bolt in it. There we go. Now, there is a backing plate. I need a nut. I need a lock washer, just one lock washer. 
Like you can see I'm covered in 5200. This stuff's <laughs> horrible. I mean, it's good, but it's horrible. Alright, now, Misha has insisted that I unplug the power. So the first one is the hardest one because I have to get the plate, the washer, the lock washer, and the nut all on at the same time. Thankfully, it's really easy to see. Oh wait, it's not. So, let's see. Space is straight up. Those are sonic booms. Yeah, they're from, they were going to the sonic as they're coming boom. down, they hit a heavy atmosphere and they're going like a thousand miles an hour. So, oh. huzzah! I just peed a little. <laughs> <laughs> we we got the feet on. Uh, we're back in the slip. Now this is really easy because you just wait till low tide, and now me and a friend can literally take our tower and set it down. So what you do is you set it down and you mark how wide it is, you pull it off and you widen it like an inch and a half on each side. They, 
the manufacturer of Tower in a Box tells you to do this so that the the legs are under tension right there and and that actually strengthens them somehow according to their engineer so when you're when you're drilling the holes to mount the center bar to the side bars uh, don't go all the way through go through each side you, you do one side because the, there's holes already in the center bar so all you have to do is drill holes in the side bars that slide into it so Drill this side, go on the other side, and drill that side. The way we did the feet was I just left the foot in the bar and drilled all the way through. And it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. They, they tell you you can use set screws where you drill halfway in on two different angles or you can drill all the way through. We just drilled all the way through. It's fine. Uh, so we got the tower on and uh, we couldn't be happier. This was not, for anybody who's worried or questioning, this is not a hard project. This is not scary. It was not nearly as tough as we thought it was going to be. There's a lot of there was a lot of kind of manual labor involved, but it didn't need to be nearly as precise. And I don't I don't know that we should really say that because it no. there was some precision involved. But we thought it was scary to build a tower and all that kind of stuff. But it's really if you test fit over and over and over, right? So the top plate it's got legs that come down at an angle, right? So when you when you when you hoist it up to your boat very gently move it around so that top plate is level that's what we did I, literally that's all i did i was like let me move these legs here let me move these legs here okay now we need to go in or out uh it's not it's it's not uh if you if you mock it up in place it is not hard at all if i had it to do over again i wouldn't flinch i it, you you want us to do one give us a call we're it experts. Not bad. <laughs> uh, my only complaint with the tower, my one complaint, so the tower looks like this, and it can do this a lot more than I like. So uh, I, I met a guy on an Amel who had the same tower in a box, and he had actually put like some stainless turnbuckles to some center mount points in the middle, and it stiffened it up immediately. I didn't want to spend the money on the professional mounts. I do want to do the turnbuckle thing. I think that's a great permanent solution. My temporary solution has to be has been to put diagonal ratchet straps on it and it stiffened it up so much. Now it's not a problem obviously if there's no weight on it, but when there's a dinghy on it or our solar panels are always on top of it, 
it stiffened it up uh, it, it, an infinite amount. It it That's is tough. yeah. That's it it, tough. it it feels solid, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I do not have any concerns. We've been very very pleased. If you're if you're thinking about Tower in a Box or you're concerned that you don't have the skills or the knowledge or or anything. They are. They do not take very much. If you can operate a drill and your own winches to move the tower up and down, you just test fit. We did it three times, four times, five times, six times. Before you do anything permanent, make it fit, and then make do it permanent, and then it fits. If you've stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching and following along on our journey. We couldn't do it without you guys. Um, please consider liking and subscribing and remember to ring that notification bell so you get notifications for our next videos. And uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram for Love of Wind. And uh, we will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>